on the Italian island of Sicily in the province of Palermo, through the towns of Cerda, Colazano, and Campo Felice. Over the mountain passes and across the ravines sit the roads which made up the greatest racing circuit in the world, the Piccolo de Amadene, more often known by its race name, the Targa Florio. Targa Florio lives in myth and legend, an event which arguably reached its pinnacle in the 1960s, high-powered sports cars blasting through the Italian countryside on a never-ending sequence of bends. It was the race of our fathers, our grandfathers, an older generation. For years, the only way to experience the once great race was through the photographs and stories, limited videos and illustrations, accounts of triumph and tragedy, in the hills of Sicily. But for any warm-blooded fan of motorsports, after being exposed to the Targa Florio, the natural reaction is to want to try it for yourself. To grip the steering wheel of your Ferrari, Porsche, or Alfa Romeo, and test yourself against the likes of Tazio Nuvolari, Joe Bagnier, or Nino Vaccarella. A nearly impossible dream, fulfilled only in neutered form by today's most wealthy, puttering their million-dollar vintage artifacts across decaying roads. But for the rest of us, a small group set out to make it a reality, to dream, to experience, to race, the Targa Florio. This is the story of one of the greatest circuits ever created in sim racing. It started as a dream. Could a virtual recreation of the Targa Florio be made? Plenty of racing circuits over the years have been digitally recreated for simulators. From the streets of Monaco to the bricks of Indianapolis, racetracks of all shapes and sizes made their way virtually under the wheels of our favorite racing cars. But the Targa Florio is different, quite massively different. Much can be said about the Targa Florio's Piccolo de Amadene circuit but perhaps its most defining quality was its length. Let's look, for instance, at Monaco. Known for having the shortest lap length of the Formula One calendar at roughly two miles or 3.3 kilometers, it offers a picturesque and technical challenge, modern racing cars having long outgrown its strict confines. At the other end of the spectrum, spa Francorchamps is the longest circuit on the modern-day Formula One schedule. At over double the length of Monaco, its route through the dense Ardennes offer a distinctly open feeling its distance and elevation a highlight of the season. But there was once bigger. Many would say there are none more mighty than Germany's Nürburgring Nordschleife. Coming in at 15.7 miles or 25.4 kilometers in its modern 24-hour variant, the Nordschleife offers more tarmac than any racer could ever want. With a staggering 170 corners and over eight minute lap time, it is many racers de facto heaven of racing. But although Spa and the Nürburgring delight us for their freedom and free-flowing courses, nothing compares to the Targa Florio. Coming in at a massive 45 miles or 72 kilometers, the Piccolo de Amadene features an astonishing 567 turns as it weaves its way through the mountains, climbing and descending over 3,500 feet from sea level to its highest point. Used from 1951 through 1977, the Piccolo circuit was actually the shortened variant of the monstrous circuits used earlier in the century, circling the entire island of Sicily. But shortened is a relative word, and it does injustice. The Piccolo de Amadene became loved and treasured by many as the greatest racing circuit of them all. So naturally, a recreation of 45 miles of natural flowing roads with multiple cities, mountain ranges, bridges, farmhouses, road signs, uneven tarmac, forests, and thousands of cheering Italian spectators in their automobiles would seem an impossibility, a crazy proposition. In a world where creating even a simple two-mile circuit could often take multiple months, if not years, surely something as massive as the Targa Florio could never exist with any considerable detail.
Some would say the decision to create the Targa Florio came out of necessity. For years, work had been underway on a 1967 World Sports Car Championship mod for Grand Prix Legends. In the 1960s, the world sports cars were just as much the top of motorsport as Formula One. Having many of the same drivers and teams competing across both, it had been a dream for many to have sports cars represented in GPL, a different style of racing which would complement and complete the historic sim in a way. But in order to simulate the season right, the cars alone would not suffice. The tracks the sports cars raced on were just as important as the vehicles themselves. Daytona, Sebring, Monza, Spa, the Nürburgring, Brands Hatch, and even Le Mans already existed in one form or another for the sim. Seven of the eight circuits needed for the prototype championship that year, only missing one, the great Targa Florio. And so, in 2005, a small dedicated team set out on the impossible to see if they could recreate the great 72-kilometer Targa Florio. The group was headed up by brilliant track creator Sergio Loro. Already responsible in part for some 30 creations for Grand Prix Legends alone, his resume included greats such as the massive 15.5-mile Piscara, Formula One's largest circuit. Loro was joined by fellow track creators Richard Cook and Ginetto. Having just wrapped up work on the delightful Czech circuit Berno, the trio seemed well-positioned as any to take on the task. But their first question to answer was, could it even technically be done? Nobody had ever created a circuit so long. Grand Prix Legends was a simulator initially intended to represent the 1967 Formula One season. Formula One of the 60s was much different than the sport is today. Many of the circuits street or open road tracks with high distances. The sim was one of the first to represent these circuits in full detail, and in 1998, that was no small feat. Grand Prix Legend's two largest circuits it shipped with were the classic Spa-Francorchamps layout, 14 fast kilometers through Belgium, and of course, Nordschleife's Green Hell, 22.8 kilometers around Schloss Nürburg. Grand Prix Legends was praised and coveted for having included these circuits in their entirety, but to model the full 72 kilometers of the Targa Florio would push the sim beyond the bounds for what was possible. And unfortunately, the worst came true. It was discovered the sim was hard-coded at a max length of 25 kilometers for a circuit, enough for nearly any reasonable circuit of any type in the world, but not the Targa Florio. The team toyed with splitting the circuit into three parts. After all, the races were run against the clock anyway, and with the time trial format, you could run a lap separately, like rally stages. But the result would not be the same. It would create an artificial break each lap, ruining the immersion and flow of the course by having to constantly load up the next stage. And racing any AI opponents, even if it was rare on the real course, would be impossible. So enter one, Nigel Pattinson. Famed for his various patches for Grand Prix Legends over the years, Nigel had mastered the black arts of reverse engineering Grand Prix Legends code and making the sim do incredible things. Lap editing tools, car sound enhancements, and most importantly, rewritten graphic rasterizers to handle the higher polygon counts at a higher frame rate. These were all priceless advancements gifted to the GPL community by Nigel. So he set out to work on what would become the Long Tracks patch, an arduous process of testing and editing to identify where and what in GPL's code held the key to the limit. And although the testing proved challenging, it was eventually found. The code had been cracked. The limit was increased to four times its original value, and Grand Prix Legends can now handle circuits up to 100 kilometers in length. Now, with nothing stopping them, the team began work in earnest. Richard Cook created the rough layout for the track using maps and satellite data from the region. He smartly split the route into 13 parts, allowing the team to work on each section of the circuit in roughly 5.5 kilometer chunks as mini circuits. Each chunk contained rough elevations and general left and right turns. To aid in their design, the team recruited a local of Palermo to drive a lap of the remaining roads with a camera affixed to his car. Using the video footage, Ginetto, Cook, and Loro were able to finely tune each section's profile and elevation and begin adding some of the important objects, such as buildings and terrain. And so, on it went. Richard Cook building sections of the circuit, sending it off to Ginetto and Sergio Loro to finally tune against video footage and dress it up with the important scenery. From 2005 through 2007, the team continued, hard at work. A full three years building a rough outline of the circuit, 
in separate chunks. Gennetto took over the lead of the project while team members drifted to and from the work. Being worked on only in their spare time, the amount of work each week was slow at times, fast at others, but always progress. Nigel Pattinson stepped in to help Gennetto as he began to combine separate sections to create one giant loop, creating tools for adding the hundreds of camera points necessary and merging AI lines to cover the full distance. And new help joined the team. Remy Roos began producing many of the textures for the circuit, while Stefano Zampretti built historic vehicle objects to line the circuit to represent the thousands of fans who had parked them there on race days. Sven Siegert built the horizon textures, prominently displaying the mountains surrounding the circuit and creating a sensation of driving through the mountains and down to the ocean. In all phases of the project, private versions of the circuit were created and tested by a large team of experienced modders. Searching for holes in the terrain, overlapping objects, misaligned textures, and warped scenery for any small detail which may be misplaced. I can remember many evenings in 2007 and 2008 together with Paul Skingley as we drove the latest beta versions of the Targa from Gennetto online. At first there was hardly any scenery or towns to be seen. We drove through a ribbon of roads. With each update, the route became more detailed. The towns were only added towards the end. As the pieces came together, final detailing was underway. Gennetto studied topographic maps of the area from the 1960s and looked for places the circuit deviated from the camera footage they had received. They strived to make the circuit recreation set in 1967, and that no detail, however how minor, was missed. Thousands of photographs were painstakingly matched to every corner. Lighting angles and textures were adjusted for accuracy. The limited onboard video from the time was reviewed and bumps added to the circuit where the cars would move. Tarmac changes replicated, the road was widened or narrowed, where trees, milestones, signs, crossing roads, buildings, guardrails, and poles were placed along the circuit. The objects and textures were diversified and detailed. Where initially placeholder objects were added, the final versions appeared. Each building in the town received its own texture. No two of the same car were parked next to each other. Each spectator in a scene had their own sprite. I was just sleeping, real life work, and Targa for a couple of years. But since I am Italian, I wanted it to look perfect. On Monday, the 28th of September, 2009, it was ready. In all 72 kilometers, the Targa Florio circuit was complete. And so, we raced. The run-up to Cerda is likely burnt into any Targa challenger's mind. A fast series of left-handers and right-handed hairpins leads gently up the Strada Estatale 120. With Mount San Calagero looming in the distance, the wide viewing angles make for a pleasurable run, and only a few key corners to memorize. Seven kilometers into the lap, you meet the town of Cerda, the home of the Targa Florio. A few sweeping bends and a right-handed hairpin lead you to the main road through town, Via Roma. A fast blast between the buildings, fans peeking out from the side streets, held at bay by the ever-courageous patrolling officers. At the exit of the town, you pass through the village of Contrada Spinizanta, weaving now more uphill through a series of faster bends before arriving at the first major hairpin. To the left quickly and up more sharply into the mountains. For the next eight kilometers, the circuit works its way back and forth over a ridge. Fast curves to the left, sharper ones to the right. The occasional hairpin to keep you honest. 
Over a crest, the road sends you downhill to the first bridge crossing, over a dry ravine, and then back up the other side. Twenty kilometers into the lap, you arrive at the Sklafani Bagni switchback hairpins. In tight succession, the road weaves its way sharply upwards, passing the diverging exit towards the town itself. Then the road flattens out, if only slightly, as you progress towards the town of Kaltavatura. Another set of switchback hairpins then leads to a larger bridge crossing over, if it hasn't been too dry, a small river. Now on the highest point of the circuit, Caltevitura looms from the hills above as you skate up the hill and diverge away from the Strade Statiale 120 and onto the Strade Provinciale 24, away from where the circuit continued onwards many years before. Now, 30 kilometers into the lap, you pass one of the many mid-lap pit stop points as the Strade Provinciale brings you downhill. Fast, left-handed corners and tight, right-handed can surprise even the most experienced. Lurking around any corner could be a stray animal, or on a practice day a civilian unsuspectingly driving their car. The surroundings become much more forested as you reach the bottom of the mountain. A quick chicane leads you through a series of hairpins, the first hidden, downwards to the left, and then right, towards the third bridge, spanning the Amera Settentrionale, or Grande River, before ascending back into the mountains through the most densely forested sections of the circuit. Hairpins greet you again, and as you pass through the final hairpin and the exit towards the town of Scalato, you cross the 36 kilometer point, halfway home. Merging onto the Strada Provinciale 9, away from Scalato now, and gently rise, through as ever, a series of bends. Peeking out of the trees, the terrain levels off as you weave past farms and open rock faces. Over the top and descending now, the road steepens past the village of Borgo Eras in the fields of flowers. Into the hills again and back into the trees, you plunge sharply downhill, 48 kilometers into the lap, into the town of Colizano. A much different trip than through Cerda some 40 kilometers ago. The trip through Colizano is a blinding series of sharp, fast corners and perhaps the most photographed spot on the Targa Florio, the signature Colizano hairpin. Leaving the town, you continue down the Strade Provinciale 9, this time firmly downhill, past the forests and villas to the left and a growing ravine and drop to the right. The sequence of corners intensifies, and slowly, the Tyrrhenian Sea, blue as the summer sky appears, closing in as you progress down the mountain. Finally, as you reach the end of the Strade Provinciale, you see the town of Campo Felice laid before you, sparkling in the summer sun. This time, a much more straightforward trip leads you down several fast city streets, with a final hairpin before ejecting you back out onto the open roads. quick series of descending S-bends and the road straightens out, one final flat-out kink, and now on the Strade Statiale 113, also known as the Grand Buen Fornello Strait. The highway stretches before you, aimed like an arrow towards Mount San Calagero, ushering you home.
Shifting into high gear for the first time in the lap, the Buon Fornello stretches for over six kilometers, longer than the famous Malzan of Le Mans. Fans posted at each intersection stretch their necks to get a glimpse of the machines at top speed, over 200 miles per hour. Then, as you approach the village of Bornfornello itself, an S-Bend as mighty as Spa's famed Mosta Kink tests the late-breaking skills and daring. You slide the car through as you accelerate again, back onto the highway. And then reaching the end of the Bornfornello, the road twists, fast bends, decelerating from high speed as you throw the car from left to right. Past another work area and through the final hairpin, you come out of the left-hand corner overlooking the Serta train station and the main work area for all the competing cars. Blasting down the short straightaway, you make your way to the left, back onto the Strade Stateale 120. And after a short distance, find yourself back to where it all began, rocketing past the grandstands and beginning another lap. It's an understatement to say the Grand Prix Legends Targa Florio circuit is a work of art. It's more than a racing course and a racing simulator. What the Targa team created transports you to another time, to an event brought back from the grave, unless you truly appreciate how special it was. The spectators gathered on the side of the road, the lines of cars parked against the edges. The sense of traveling from the middle of nowhere and suddenly coming across the villages of Cerda, Caltevitoro, and Campo Felice, flying past the buildings and spectators, only to be sent back to the never-ending spiral of roads. The atmosphere of the track is unlike any other. Nino is painted on the brick walls in unapologetic support for local hero Nino Vaccarella. Shop signs hang over the city streets. The Tyranian Sea glows in the distance. The target team recreated a legend, and we are all forever lucky. So, how does one learn a 72-kilometer track? There are many strategies. The great Vic Elford was quoted as saying somebody needs at least 60 laps around a track like this. The old-fashioned way would be taking your time, stopping frequently to take notes, and slowly increasing your speed, lap after lap, on the sections you can remember. It's not required to memorize the entire track, only where you must slow down, apply the brakes, or take the right line to navigate a section. For those without 40 plus hours to burn, the Targa Trainer is an application built by Lee, a steamed Grand Prix Legends mod creator, which allows you to start your lap from various locations across the circuit, each voiced and announced by the great Ginetto. Certa. And for those who want an easier, rally-like experience, which the event became in its later years, a co-driver with pace notes was created, also by Lee, to help navigate all 567 turns. Upon the release of the Targa Florio circuit in 2009, Grand Prix Legends had already surpassed its 20th birthday, but it was only for a sim like Grand Prix Legends, with its talented and knowledgeable community, that a project like this would have ever happened. And although the source work should be and was appreciated, the sim racing world had changed a lot since 2005 when the project initially started. Many dreamt of racing the fantastic recreation in the newest sims with all of the advancements and ease of use they offered. In 2011, the Targa Florio conversion team released their adaptation of the circuit to the then-leading sim R-Factor. The team worked collaboratively with Genetto and the whole GPL team to faithfully port the track, bringing along with it many enhancements such as dynamic skybox, added road detail, additional foliage and tree lines, dynamic shadows, additional trackside objects, and more. With its conversion to the G-Motor engine, the track was then easily migrated to all the Simbin sims, including GT Legends, GTR2, and Power and Glory, amongst others, allowing historic sports car fans to enjoy the circuit in the sim of their choosing. In January 2021, S-Victor released their conversion and update of the circuit to R-Factor 2, 
Once again with permission from the original team, the R-Factor 2 version built upon the enhancements of the original R-Factor conversion and added new, full, four-sided objects for buildings, new terrain models, 3D grass, updated tree models, higher detailed track surface and poly smoothing, fixed surface gaps, and additional configurations as separate rally stages to more easily drive the circuit for learning or timed events. It goes without mentioning the circuit was also converted to Assetto Corsa. It was done initially by a group known as SimTrax. This conversion, however, sparked controversy in that it was initially sold for money without permission. The track has since been released for free from the group, but the conversion itself does not carry the same level of care as the other versions. But in passion and respect for the original project, I've done what I can to fix some of the errors and offer a free patch in the description of this video to rectify some of the problems the original conversion introduced. On a lighter note, there's been a new version of the circuit in the works. A version which uses the GPL original as reference, but is not a direct conversion. User Ables for the past four years has been working on a full 1973 version of the circuit from scratch for both the Seto Corsa and R-Factor 2. This version uses the latest laser scanning and LiDAR techniques for the remaining roads and adapts them to retrofit them for the final year the race ran as a world championship event. In recent months, the track has received many updates and continues to improve with each release, but there's no estimate for when the final version may be complete. There will never be another Targa Florio. And although the event has been revived over the years with historic meetups and modern rally, the true impression of a sports car set loose over a winding, impossible to memorize course, spectators lining its path with minimal safety will never be seen again. But thanks to a dedicated group of talented artists, coders, designers, and most importantly, passionate motorsports enthusiasts, we can all enjoy lapping the greatest circuit in the world.